Welcome, and today we will be doing something a bit different. We have only covered firearms so far and spoke very little of what else you need to be carrying with you. With that in mind, I would like to walk you through my setup. This is not to say that you should get everything you see in this video. My setup works for me, and this video is intended to help you figure out what kind of gear you need for your needs. Without further ado, let's dive into it. Number 1. Smith & Wesson Shield Plus There are a ton of micro-compact pistols on the market now, but the Shield Plus remains one of the best ones out there. It boasts a 3.1-inch barrel inside the 6.1-inch slide. It is a hair above an inch thick and the entire package weighs 20 ounces, which is somehow lighter than the Shield despite having more capacity. With 10 plus 1 rounds to work with, you have ample firepower to get out of any sticky situations. While micro-compacts are known for the lack of grip real estate and therefore lack of traction and control, the Shield Plus offers a great degree of comfort. The beaver tail encourages a high grip and the grip texturing is rough for excellent traction without being harsh. If the grip is too short for your hands, consider getting the 13-round extended mag for extra real estate. Despite the short sight radius, the Shield Plus offers decent accuracy. The ported barrel allows for a very flat shooting experience, and the porting tube ejects the spent casing out the side so it does not get in the sight. The trigger has a clean and smooth pull and a short tactile and audible reset, allowing you to put down shots rapidly and accurately with not too much recoil. The Shield Plus offers a nice balance in every category size, weight, capacity, and performance. It is a very reliable piece. Number 2. SIG Elite Defense Ammo As I have said before, this video is a lot more about the gun itself. I also feed it with the SIG Elite Defense Ammo. It offers decent performance. If you can get those in 147 grain, great. Otherwise, 124 grain will do just fine. As for your loadout, I recommend rolling with the flush fit 10-round mag in your gun and carrying another mag in your pocket as a backup. Back in your car, you should have a few more mags with a larger capacity if you can just as a precaution. Having a spare mag on you is useful not only on the off chance you need to reload, but also in case your gun has a malfunction. Of course, while the Shield Plus is reliable, it might still fail if your assailant manages to close the distance and turn the fight into a grappling situation when the gun gets caught on your shirt, whatever the case may be. Having a backup mag is handy so you can quickly reload and get back into the action. Another tip I want to offer here is that you should rotate your ammo as in reloading with fresh ones at least twice a year or so depending on where you live. The temperature, humidity, and other factors may demand you to do this more often. For the old ammo, you can take it to the range and practice firing there just to polish your marksmanship skills, and then you load in newer ammo. Number 3. Phalanx Concealment Let's talk about where you put the gun next the holster. My primary option here is the Phalanx Concealment Holster, because there are many configurations to choose from other than 34 outer colors and 71 inner colors. It supports many pistols, right-handed or left-handed, various clips for belt attachments, sweat guards, and the additional optics cut. There are no sharp edges on the holster, just sleek lines and gentle contour that allow for a very comfortable carry. Number 4. T-Rex Arms Another holster you can consider is one from T-Rex Arms. There are a few to choose from and the sidecar model is particularly interesting. It is an IWB inside the waistband holster with a handsome array of add-ons. In addition to supporting many popular pistol models, you can throw on additional attachments such as an additional mag so that the extra mag you have on you doesn't have to jostle around in your pocket as you walk. The only downside with this one is that it might not be as comfortable as the holster from Phalanx Concealment. Number 5. QVO Tactical Holsters from QVO Tactical are also another value-packed option with various color schemes, IWB or OWB outside the waistband style, and some support optics or suppressors, the list goes on. They make great holsters, and you should definitely check them out. Number 6. Spyderco Endura 4. 
I mentioned before that you might get into a hand-to-hand -hand combat at really close range. Maybe you get jumped or lose your gun somehow. In that case, pulling out a gun is a very terrible idea. Whatever the case may be, you need a backup piece. I'm talking about knives. The Endura 4 is an excellent workhorse. With a 3.75-inch VG10 steel blade, it is very light, tipping the scale at 3.6 ounces. It has a long and slender blade, a simple drop point shape, and a full flat grind. That means the knife is a continuous grind from the spine down to the secondary bevel, a common feature found in kitchen knives, as this grind allows for great slicing performance. The Endura 4 slices well, and its pointy end, though fairly thin, can punch holes easily. This knife can be a lot more than just a self-defense piece, however. Its long taper allows for fine, precise cuts. The clip allows for a worry-free pocket carry, and it will hold onto the seam securely. The grip contours also allow for a comfortable and secure hold. The best part is that it can be deployed with one hand a very important feature if you also want your knife as a self-defense tool. There are many variants of the Endura 4 on the market, and they are all amazing knives. Number 7. Haley Strategic Surefire D3FT Let's talk about flashlights. For your consideration, may I present the D3FT Combat Light. Based on the aluminum ring between the head and battery compartment, the D3FT is intended to be used with a handgun in the Surefire Rogers grip, not the ice pick grip. Other than that little complication, the D3FT is about as simple as it gets. There's only one brightness level, and it lights things up to 100 to 200 yards. Overall, a really reliable piece to carry with you, and the clip ensures a comfortable carry. Number 8. Headhunter Rat. Finally, a full tang knife. That is, to the folding knife the same as a revolver is to a semi-auto. Folding knives are always popular, but if you want absolute reliability, you go for full tang knives. This one has a high price tag, but it is worth the investment. Two and Harley Elmore from Headhunters said it best. Most knives you see nowadays are designed by people who use them to open cardboard boxes and cut strings. Headhunter knives are designed for people who demand more from their knives. The rat is designed with combat in mind. The blade is us 8 steel with a length of 3 and 1 quarter inches, 3 quarters inches in width, and 1 8 inch in thickness, topped with a titanium nitride finish. The overall length is 7 and 1 8 inches. The length offers enough depth to hit vital organs, and the width is thin enough to slide into openings in the bone. The spear-like configuration maximizes penetration capacity. The unique finger coil enables a secure grip no matter how you hold and swing the knife. The stock handle offers plenty of traction already, but you can get the G10 contoured handle that has more aggressive texturing with deeper grooves. With your purchase, you get a custom ambidextrous kydex sheath with spring clips and garment hook, as well as a training knife that is an exact replica of the rat, with a few changes for safety reasons. For one, the blade is one, two inch shorter, and the unit is in anodized blue, a safety standard in the military. Due to its unique shape, I highly recommend you practice with the trainer first, so you can experiment with the most comfortable sheath placement for the fastest drawing speed. And there you have it, folks. These are my everyday carry loadouts. Again, I want to emphasize that you do not need to replicate my gears. What I got here worked for me, and it may not work as well for you. At the end of the day, the best setup for you is the one that suits your needs and is comfortable for you. With a bit of practice, you should be ready to take on any threat that comes your way. I hope this video has been educational, and we would love to hear what your EDC loadout is, so let us know in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you in the next episode.